Hey guys, David from Dash Off-Road and today we are in a Winnebago Mossberg. Why are we in this van? Well, I bought a few vans in my time and I've got a family, I've got kids that high and that high and it's almost impossible to get them out to go shopping for caravans so I'm going to start putting some family bunk caravan walkthrough videos up on YouTube for you guys to have a look at so you can do this in the comfort of your own lounge suite opposed to me being here in a really hot caravan but I'm going to try and look cool What do we want out of a family bunk caravan? Well, we want storage, so really we need to know whether this van is going to be any good for just a weekend or like a month away or even living permanently. Um, we need to know things like where do you put your chairs, does it fit a Ziggy or a Weber Q barbecue somewhere without being a pain in the bum, um, is there going to be enough uh, fresh water, solar, batteries to do free camping. So I'll take you through everything, here we go. So this is the Mossman Winnebago, can sleep six people if needed to be, there's a, a queen size bed here, bunks at the back which you can have two or three as an option, and there's another like um, lounge sort of thing here that would turn into a bed, so if you needed a family of six in a caravan, this could be an option for you. Uh, at the same time it's very comfy with four with just the twin bunk system. I'm going to take you through all the things that I like. This is totally unbiased by the way, there's not sponsored or anything like that. I just want to get some caravan family bunk walkthroughs up on YouTube because in my opinion there's not enough. Uh, I'll take you through it inside first and I'll do the outside. Here we go. Alright, let's start at the front of the van. Alright, nice big queen bed and yes that lifts up. Um, cupboards, storage around the place. No storage down here but that's because there's that's where the tunnel boot is and we will show you oh that's very deep cupboards to hang personally i wouldn't mind shelves in there but you know that could be done later or maybe an option um move around pretty good size kitchen to be honest and a decent size sink excuse my sunglasses and somewhere to actually dry the dishes for some reason caravans always forget about that um, this is the loungeette, it's quite long actually, I could almost lie down on there, and that turns into a bed as well. TV for mum and dad, but then it's on a big angled bracket so it can spin around. And you'll notice as well up here, this vent, roof vent, is much bigger than most of the caravans that I've seen around the place, so I'm pretty happy to see that as well. Cupboards, everyone talks about hinges with caravans, so I'll show you the hinges. A nice little strut there. I like the idea of this cup up here because you're always looking for places to put you know the iPads, the tissues. So that's an easy access spot there. Power. As we come down here, so we've got the fridge, it's a large fridge, freezer. It's not one of those auto-selecting ones, but that's no big deal because just when you get to camp, you just press, I don't know, whatever you want it to be on. Um, gas. You just press the button, no big deal. Good lighting, heaps of space in there. A real freezer, a microwave. And this is where you light your gas hot water system, the Truma, and um, also a nice display showing, let's see if we can get in here a bit better. And this is the BM Pro they're putting in all of their vans well. Tells you how much solar input's coming in. So there's a 100 amp hour battery, two tanks in this one and um, 150 watt solar on the roof. Let's move down the other end. Now Winnebago's have got massive ensuite bathrooms, like full size. I know with some caravans in a small, and my van actually, is quite small. If you actually sit on the toilet and shut the door, your knees are touching the door. But at the same time, the basin, so this one is a porcelain, that's not plastic, but <laughs> silly little things. You want to brush your teeth, you can actually get like your head in there and get water to rinse your mouth out. Small things but uh, practical. They all come with washing machines, 2.5 kilos and there's a lot of things that make sense here like just the little bracket. So if you put your toiletries up here they're not going to fall out and transport. Mural. Heaps of lighting. Lighting's excellent. 
Now as far as storage for the kids, one cupboard, and I guess that's the consequence of having a really big bathroom. Some vans will have two cupboards there. Of course you can store more stuff, but you've got a tiny bathroom. So, but you know, as far as you know, how much space do you need? Two kids fit enough clothes on each shelf for the, you know, all the t-shirts and that sort of thing, shoes down the bottom, and heaps of hanging room and uh, board games maybe up the top. That's what we're keeping our cupboard. The beds, bunk beds are quite wide, which is good. Um, lots of space up there, kids always like hiding. Screen, so if they open the window, they don't fall out. And you can lift the bed up to get access to the tunnel boot underneath. So I find that's good for toys because they can get them when they're in the van or out the van as well. Full size oven and uh, good electric hot plate and gas. Pantry. Yeah, there's enough room in there to live a month. Cabinetry feels fine. I find with some of the cheaper caravans, the drawers just fall out when you're in transit or on um, roads, but there's heaps of bench space. I must say, I'm liking the amount of bench space in here. Okay, let's walk out, and I'm afraid there's gonna be road noise, so please excuse that. This door is quite uh, unique and innovative. I'll show you, it's got quite a weight to it, which is good, but this is what I like. Look at the back of the door. Little magnet that catches here. That's great. And then if I want to just have the screen. Letting plenty of air through, but a very secure door. Like no one's gonna break through that. And this is just all uh, glass. Starting from the front, we've got twin nine kilo gas bottles. This is the on-road hitch just for your table, but you can get a cross-country articulated hitch set up. I'll talk a bit more about the cross-country in a bit. Water tap in a very, very good position. Be nice to see a cover there, but um, at least every time you go to wash your hands after hitching up, you're always on the wrong side of the drawbar if it's over the other side. So that's where a tap should be, if you ask me. Good planning there. I want to talk about the shape of a van too. Rooms and so forth about weight and towing two ton or three ton or whatever. But after towing a lot of vans of all different weights, I find that the, the shape of the front and how it can cut through wind is more important than how much a van weighs. So this has got a nice angled front on it. Should cut through wind quite well. Walk down, step of course. Now, like I said, this is the on-road package, but the suspension is a bit different. It's not your typical leaf suspension, but it's not your typical independent suspension either. It's kind of something new. So I'm going to get Charlie, the owner of this van, to talk about that in a little bit more. So I tried to explain the suspension very poorly, so I got someone that knows a bit more about these caravans. It's Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Howdy. Now, this suspension isn't independent, well, like a traditional sense, but it's n not like a leaf spring. So what is this suspension about? So basically, our independent rubber suspension is what we call it, so IRS. Yeah. Um, it's basically three torsion rubber beams mm -hmm. running through the axle. Yeah. Um, so as the wheel flexes, it pushes on one of the rubber beams or the mm -hmm. rubber torsion bars and obviously moves independently to what yeah. the back wheel does. So basically, if you can imagine two wheels like this, yeah. if this wheel goes up, that'll go up, this will come down and it'll just keep moving like that. So, okay, that's sort of a step up from the, the rock and roll sort of situation. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, as far as the load capacity of these, there's yes. a couple of options? Three options. Yeah. Right, so you, you can start off with a two and a half ton, right. going to 2700. And obviously option three is 2950. Okay, so it makes sense. You know, I'm thinking myself, if I was buying this, I'll just get the biggest one, unless I was driving a Prado or something, I guess. Yeah, so Prado, you can, a lot of people who, got, who own Prados will go either option one or option two. Yep. Um, it's not until you start talking to guys who drive the big four drives. Yep. Um, so either your Y62s or your 200s, yep. they'll go to a 2950 option. 
And so payload, what's the sort of the three options with the payloads? So one was 450 kilos, yep. and I think the top one was 890. 890. Yep. So heaps of payload, actually more than I've seen in pretty much any van. All right, let's go back and have a look at the vans outside. Oh. Outside here, power, cigarette lighter, twin USBs, that's a good idea for charging. That's the antenna, power out as well, that's nice. So you can bring your TV out here if you wanted to, or electric barbecue. Being able to store things. So as I was talking about storage before, I've got a van similar to this. This is where the chairs live, um, all the things that you need to access, the totem tennis, there's heaps of room for all that. On the back, you probably don't want to mount anything on this back bumper, but I'm very keen to see, yeah, it is too, auxiliary shower. Um, that's just for like hosing the kids feet off and when they come back from the beach that sort of thing Cassette toilet Power in There's your tank so that's when you want to hook up to mains or fill up your tanks Hot water service now you do have to remove this cover with the trimmers um, To run the hot water gas hot water service Look at this smart idea so it actually comes out, comes up, and it's got this little latch here to hold it in place. How clever. Ah, there's one thing I forgot that I want to talk about. The gas bayonet. Put in the right spot as well. Instead of like underneath or hard to get with. Very smart. So this Mossman comes in the standard white finish, or there's a grey finish. Or I'll go up here to the cross-country off-road edition and just have a look at the difference you get with this. Massive tyres and rubber and then you get the fully independent suspension and it's a, it's a bit taller as well. So I guess this is if you're really doing the off-road stuff. So I hope you like this review of the Winnebago Mossman. Um, I'm going to be doing more of these reviews all the time, so make sure you hit that like or subscribe down the bottom if you want to see more of these family bunk vans, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, yeah.